All right, so in, um, in this example, we're going to go through the two basic concepts that we've learned in the last few lectures, that is of bootstrapping and cross-validation. And the commonality across both of these is we're essentially using resampling techniques to draw different samples from our data set. And, um, and so this first example just goes through without going into any details of how you what you do in terms of the model fitting and so, so forth, but just how you construct indices that uh, pull out the samples from the data that you need. So let's just start with a simple case. So here we have a simple data set that just consists of 100 numbers. And you, know, you might want to visualize it like that. OK, so this is just from the normal distribution. So we have 100 data points. And now let's just use those data to demonstrate different ways to pull out samples from it. So let's just start with bootstrapping here. So bootstrapping, remember when we say bootstrap to determine uh, confidence intervals on the mean, you just draw with replacement from the data that you have. So again, here we have 100 data points, so we want to draw 100 data points from these data points, but with replacement. And each time we do that, that's one sample. So in this simple example, we are going to perform 1,000 bootstraps, and we're just going to do a for loop over uh, those 1,000 bootstraps, and each time we run this command. And there's many different ways to do exactly the same thing. I actually just saw a command, and uh, I think it's built into MATLAB called ramsample, uh, which you could use, or you could just do it directly like I do here. So let's just manually go through one of the four, one of the iterations. So p equals 1, the first time we construct a vector of indices. And so all that's, all that's happening here is we sample uh, random number between 0 and 1, and we do that n times, so we get a 1 by n vector, and we multiply by n and take the ceiling, and that all that does is draws a random number between 1 and n, so 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 to n, where n is the number of data points we have, so we have 100 data points. So actually, let's just look at boot index. So each element is just an integer between 1 and um, 100. And importantly, there can be repeats um, in the, uh, the indices shown here. And we could actually figure that out by using the union command. Union automatically removes duplicates, so this shows we only have 66 unique uh, indices here. So anyway, so what boot index gives us is a way to draw from our data set. So remember, our data is just a vector. So if we want to draw the 10th, element of data, that's just what we do, and it turns out to be that number, and so if we just do data and use instead of a vector 10, but we could just type boot index, that draws, that performs the sampling for us. And now we have a bootstrap sample on which we can perform whatever operation we want to. So, so I'm not putting those innards here, I'm just showing you how to construct indices, and of course you could just loop through this and It'll each time draw a random sample and then perform whatever operation you put in in the middle there. So that's the bootstrapping. So let's move on to this next type of resampling. So leave one out cross validation. Remember, it's leave out a single data point and use all the other data points to fit your model. And then you're going to take that model and then predict the one that you left out. So that's even simpler. So here we just loop over each of the data points in our sample, one through n, n's 100, remember? And the first time through, we're going to construct uh, the training index vector. So this is just taking, so set diff is just a set operation kind of from like math. So our set initially consists of all the indices 1 through 100. And then we're just going to remove anything that lies in this uh, second set. So it essentially just removes p, where p is on the first iteration, the first data point, the second data point, dot, dot, dot. So the first iteration is, um, is 1, so this should consist of two through 100, and you can see here that it is like that. All right, so that's, so we're going to, we can use train and training indexes, indices to use for training or fitting our model. And then, oh, sorry, I mean, you should just do a simple example. Thanks for saying that. So let's just say we have 5, 10, 15. You want to remove everything in this vector that exists in this other vector. So if we put in 5 here, it'll just take it out. And then you can try it like that, or if you include other elements, it doesn't do anything. 
Does that make sense? So it's just, of course, you could write this more directly as 2 through n, like that. But, you, you know, once you modify your resampling scheme, it might be more convenient to do a more general mechanism like that. All right, so that's training and exit. Then you also want to be able to pull out the data that you eventually predict on, and that's just test index. And here I just construct it directly as the one, which indicates the first data point. So this is almost trivial. So to get those data points, you just use as, as indices into your original data set. And remember, it's just 100 numbers. And then you just pull out essentially 2 through 100. So that gives us 99 numbers. And then once you are done fitting your model and so forth, you can test it on this these this sample from our sample, or this sample from our data set, which is just one number. So that's just the first iteration. The next time around when p equals 2, you'll construct our training set, which just consists of 1 through 100, but ignoring the second element. And then our testing will just be 2, and so on and so forth. So that's pretty straightforward, I think. And then slightly more complicated is this k-fold. And again, there's different ways to construct these indices. This is just the way that came to mind um, when I was implementing it. Um, but essentially, we're trying to take all of our data points and divide them in equal groups, where k is the number of groups. And here I just said k is 8. But um, fortunately, the code is general, so I could change k, and this will, uh, in theory, also work. So let me just show you what the result of this weird uh, coding scheme is, and it should be intuitive what is happening. So I want eight groups, and so that's why there's eight rows here in this matrix. And then each row consists of the indices that of the elements in that group. And the one complication is 100 is not divisible by 8 exactly, so you have to do some thinking of how to evenly balance my data points and I've used a certain scheme here, but uh, intuitively the result should seem clear that some groups have um, oh, oh, 12, no, 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, that's right. But these groups have 13 and these groups have 12. And I'm just using NAN as an indicator that it's just a blank. Um, and just to prove, so in all of these if you aggregate all of them, become the full 100 data points. And I can do that here using the union function. Union kind of goes with set diff. It's another, it's just going to union all together these elements and the, the elements in here, which is just that empty bracket. And so if you union, um, and it automatically sorts, so you can see one through 100, and then some other ones taken up by those blanks. And to generate this matrix, I just use these commands. And you can read through it, and it's probably the only effective way to figure out what's happening. But essentially, I first generate a random permutation of 1 through the number of data points. That's this line. So this is just random, ran 1 through 100 randomly ordered. And then you want to reshape that into a matrix just like this. And the only difficulty, again, is are these excess elements that might exist. And so I have to add them on before I do the reshape. Anyway, so once you have that. Um, this matrix, which you can use a different method if you want. Um, then we just do a for loop. So for each group, we'll leave out that group, train on the rest, predict on that first group. So it follows the same logic. So P is 1. You'll pull out the first row in this matrix. So P equals 1. Pull out the first row. Here's what it looks like. Um, maybe I should make my window smaller so it won't wrap around. There we go. And they're just little ignore the NAN elements just in case they happen. So for example, P equals 7, we'll get some um, NANs in there. Oops. Why doesn't that work? Something happened. Oh, let me just rerun this. P equals 7. All right, so this might have NANs, and that's going to cause problems if you use it to index through data. So that's why we got to remove those NANs. And then we're happy because they're all valid indices. Um, and then the training set is just, there's different ways to do it again, but this is just using the set diff. So all the other data points. So take one through n and just 
remove only those that occur in the testing vector. So now we have test index and train index, and then we can index into our data just as usual, just like that. All right, pretty straightforward. This is just playing with integers and indices. So let's go through a real example that uses that for some useful purpose. So in this case, we're using a simple linear regression model, and we're going to bootstrap it to learn something about the uncertainty on the model output. So here's the example. Generate some fake data. So 100 data points, I generate x and y, our usual favorite example. So we're going to fit a line as a function of x to predict y. Here are the data points. That's easy. We're going to do 10,000 bootstraps. And each time we draw a bootstrap sample and fit this model, we're going to um, save the fit of the model. And we're going to do that by evaluating the model over a certain x range. So here I define negative 3 to 3. And we're going to increment that every uh, 0.5. So let me just show you. So we're going to evaluate the model at negative 3, negative 2.5, and so forth. So that's just a constant that I define up here. All right, so the structure of this is, well, we're going to do some initialization of results that we save. But um, besides that, there's just this loop over 1,000 bootstraps. Each time we go through, we'll draw a sample, fit the model, and then save some results. So there's two types of results we want to save. Uh, let's we'll start with this one. These are just the parameters. So in the linear model, we have a parameter that's so ax plus b, a is a parameter, it's the weight on the x regressor. And the other parameter is b, which is just a constant, um, but it's a parameter. So that's why there's, it's, we're gonna, this is going to be 10,000 by 2. So each row is going to have a different set of estimates. So that we, I pre-initialize that just to remind ourselves what dimensions are. I also um, have this other variable. So that's going to save the fitted model that I just mentioned on each bootstrap. And so it has, we're going to orient ourselves by 10,000 rows, and each row will have y values corresponding to each um, x, the vector of x values here. So it's just going to be the same dimensionality as that. So initialize those up, and now let's evaluate that. So first bootstrap, let's just go through what that does. So here we draw that bootstrap sample. So these are random integers between 1 and n, where n is the number of data points, and we can do with we, can, we do that with replacement. So there it can be repeats. So this first time around, it'll just generate some random indices, and now we're going to use ix, an indexing variable a vector here, and we're going to pull out only those data points. So on the x side, we're going to pull out from x, and we're going to construct our usual regressor matrix. So each, there's going to be two columns. The first column will be the x regressor. The second column will be a column ones. So the size is 100 by 2. We still have 100 points. It's just they've been randomly sampled, of course. And then we're going to use that regressor matrix to do least squares estimation. And notice there's an indexing through y. So y is the y value. And we're going to use ix again to pull out those corresponding values in y. And this does the fitting. So now we have two weights. So now we got to save these results. So let me skip this step for a second. So then we'll just save h, just the two weights we've estimated, into the, the first row of params. Oops. No, I didn't define boot. Boot equals 1. And the other thing we'll save is the evaluation of the model over that range that we talked about earlier. So to, to do that, you just ax plus b, so xvals times a, which we stored as the first element of h, plus b, which is the second element. And then that'll be, uh, I forget how many of the x values. There's 13 values. So this will just be a 1 by 13 vector, and we'll just store that in the first row of model fit. So anyway, we'll do that. Took no time at all. Then we will visualize the results. So let's just close this up. First, we'll just plot the data points, scatter plot, just like that. So then we'll do some 
summary. So we have a thousand bootstraps. We could plot a thousand lines, but we, it'll be hard to look at. So here I'll just take summarize the thousand results using percentile method. Um, and so I'm going to get three different percentiles. One is the median, that's 50th. And then these other two sort of define the central 70, uh, 95%. So this says take the percentiles of model fit. So these, this holds all those lines, 10,000 lines. And it's going to summarize across the first dimension because we can't look at 10,000 numbers. And so as a result of that, so this last common one means in that dimension um, perform the percentiles. So now we broke it down to three values. Then we just kind of want to visualize that. So here I'm going to use a patch object to draw kind of the shape. It's like a polygon. And this is the 95% range of our bootstrap results. And I just took away the edges just to make it pretty. And I can also plot a line at the median. So that's exactly what you might expect, somewhere in the middle. And then the last bit here is we can, these are overlapping the data points a little bit. So let's just use this command that raises the so we saved H1 as the handle of that object, and we can kind of put it to the top. So now you can see all the data points. Then we'll just put some labels, X and Y. Then last bit, I'm going to put something in the title, just so we have some numbers here. I'm going to use the same percentile idea, but um, on the parameters. So parameters, we have 10,000 parameters. Let's summarize them by taking the 95 confidence interval. and right here, but we'll just put it in the figure by the appropriate um, commands there. So this tells us about something about our certainty on A and B. So A is probably somewhere in this range between 9 and 10, or 9 and 11, and B is within this range. All right. Okay, so the last example is using the exact same data and exact same model, this linear model, we're going to do cross-validation. So we'll just take the data we've already defined, and then we have a for loop as usual, so we're going to do this n times, where n is the number of data points, I think we have 100, and each time we're going to leave out that data point and then try to predict it. So. And we're going to save all of these results. And specifically, we're going to save, so we have n data points. We have, we're going to have a prediction for each data point. We're going to save that into this vector as we go. So the first time around, let's leave out the first data point. So our usual, we're going to train on 2 through 100, test on, I think we have 100. What is that? Yeah. Train on 2 through 100 and test on the first data point. So we're going to use this training index. We're only going to use the data points we've indicated in training index. So we got to pull that out of our x variable, construct a regressor matrix, and then fit it, pulling out the corresponding elements in y. So this gives us our precious parameters. So that's the fitted model. Now we want to check how well it predicts the first data point, um, because that's the iteration that we're on. So we construct our regressor matrix and then multiply it times the parameters we just estimated. And then we save that in the first element of this vector that I just talked about. So, so just as a result of this first iteration, everything is zero except for this very first entry and prediction. So we're going to do that 100 times. And then by the end of this, we will fill out the predictions vector. So now we have a set of 100 predictions. The last bit is just we're going to compare that to the data points, to the to the actual data points. And here I just have a quick calculation of r squared, and it basically involves the predictions that we have as well as the original data. And just the last bit, we'll print it out to the screen what that number is. Eighty-five percent.